We now move on to Education and Children's Services, OSC Council, Mrs Tracy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm very pleased, uh, even at this late hour, to be able to um, put this paper before the Council. Probably the most radical and exciting uh, proposal that the present Government um, has come up with and that we as a Council wholeheartedly support. There are speakers. Suspect. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody sit back down again. Um, Labour's position on free schools is clear. We've got three tests. And what are these? Schools should raise standards for pupils and parents. That they should, continue, should contribute to narrowing the gap between rich and poor and that we must consider the wider impact which any new school opening in the borough would have on existing schools in the area. They mustn't divert scarce resources from our schools. If a free school has been established and it's performing well, we would not seek to close it. But a future Labour government would seek to develop closer, democratically accountable links between local authorities and all schools within them. The report recognises the need for a Wandsworth Commission on Academies and Free Schools to safeguard the standards of performance of our schools and our pupils in this rush for a diversity of choice. So why do we need this? Why do we need the Commission? It's because the majority group on the Wandsworth Council um, recognises the dangers inherent in splitting up our education commu community generally away from the local authority. The majority group is split, so the Commission is a concession to all those Conservatives who fear that this could all end in tears and the Council would have to manage the schools eventually. It also recognises the danger that standards would go, could go down without the necessary safeguards and support. In fact, the paper, is, part of the paper is about making the new school system work effectively because it foresees difficulties with the situation. Now, I think there are, you know, the report and the paper do pre propose some good ideas to achieve this and we're happy to take part in discussions about the merits of providers while free schools are the only way of establishing new schools but we believe that they should not be the fact is that we in Wandsworth have a four star maybe even a five star education department which has proved itself to have constantly supported schools and enabled them to raise standards of performance and attainment of our pupils over many years. We have a proven track record and there are now worries that the new developments in education and in schools that, that we can see of maintaining those school and educational standards could be in jeopardy. In fact, the new developments attack parental choice. Parents know that Wandsworth provides good schools, but we are no longer allowed to open them. We must leave it to others without our track record. I'm sure, actually, Cathy would probably love to be able to open a new outstanding school in the borough. And we believe that good LEAs like Wandsworth should be able to open schools where there is a demographic need. All good schools and new schools should welcome a positive relationship with the local authority and other schools. And School leaders across London in a very recent survey commissioned by London Council showed how much they value the support that uh, local education authorities give. We've argued many times over Bolingbrook and made the point about capital money being spent on the site that would have been better used amongst other schools in the borough that really are in urgent need of repair. We want a fair and economically efficient allocation of resources not a free-for-all or over, over shout, shouts loudest gets the money. Accountability is essential and we can see the role for education authorities. Let's hope the Commission will set, set up will be able to safeguard the standards of performance of any new schools outside our control. We welcome the setting up of the Commission and recognise that with a growing schools population, more schools places will be needed but with those worries of lack of accountability and the difficulties with planning of new school places too. So we don't take a dogmatic approach that any new school should be a free school. The Conservative group seems to be split, 
Some of you argue for three schools and diversity, but others are rightly worried about the possible consequences on school standards without accountability, hence the Commission. Our position is clear. Three tests for the school, which the Bolingbroke wouldn't have passed. The paper is a step forward, but it's not sufficient because it doesn't allow for good local authorities like Wandsworth to take a lead in new education provision. Thank you, Councillor Nadler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, well, it has felt a little bit like a playground at times in here this evening, so um, it's perhaps appropriate that I'd like to start by transporting you for a moment to a Wandsworth location where inspiration for this speech hit me last Sunday afternoon, the profound contemplative oasis that is the Swaby Gardens play area. Now, I was struck there by the conversation of two children playing. You can't stop me, said one. It's a free country. A free country. Now, when I was a small child, that phrase meant something quite specific because there were large parts of our continent beyond the Berlin Wall where freedom was still only a dream. Now that phrase, it's a free, com it's a free country, no doubt means different things to all of us in this chamber and beyond. Over the years, loosely speaking, those of us on the right have defined freedom in terms of fundamental rights and those on the left have tended to articulate issues of relative freedoms. My Swaby Gardens moment was not a flight of arcane fancy because it's these different approaches to freedom, to the proper role of the state, which also informs and makes so fascinating the national debate around free schools and why I think that whatever your political position, it's a privilege to be involved in that debate in a borough which is not afraid of embracing radical ideas. The debate is not straightforward, as, as we can tell from uh, this evening's contributions. It doesn't fall rigidly within party lines, uh, which is why that I have to say I do actually feel sorry for the Shadow Education Secretary Stephen Twigg as he struggles to articulate Labour's latest position on free schools. Um, only days ago, Mr Twigg said, no politician should be against such schools. Then after an apparent reprimand by his party leader, Mr Twigg has been twisting ever since rowing back from his own perfectly sensible conclusion. Let me put this into context. Since the 1960s, the, edu the education debate in this country has become stuck in a rut. The left championed comprehensives, the old right banged on about grammar schools. In the meantime, government ministers of all hues graduated from and sent their children to public schools. Free country we may have been, but there was nonetheless a Berlin Wall of our own dividing the educational provision in Britain. Put crudely, the state system, although good in many places, was allowed to stagnate in others, whilst a privileged minority could always buy into a private system that boasts some of the best schools in the world. Don't get me wrong, I'm a conservative. I will always defend parents' freedom to choose a private school, and there's no doubt that the best independent schools set standards of academic achievement to which any school should aspire. But what about those parents who simply did not have the wherewithal to access private education? What about those communities where successive governments deemed <coughs> that successive governments are sorry, deemed worth only what Labour's Alistair Campbell called a bog standard comprehensive? You see, it's no wonder that Stephen Twigg is confused. Free schools, that is, schools that can be set up by parents, by communities, where the local provision is failing for whatever reason, such free schools are the obvious descendants of academies. Now, in their short history, academies have established rigorous academic standards and discipline within the state sector, schools which parents are showing that they wish to replicate by setting up free schools, schools which in the past were more readily only available to paying parents. And I'm more than happy to be able to thank, prepare to boo, Tony Blair, Mr Twigg's former mentor for breaking through the educational Berlin Wall of the last half century with his overdue innovation. Now, of course, Labour, if it really cares about deprived communities, about improving standards in education, and actually about cementing the role of state education, should embrace the academy and free school revolution. Conversely, this might be more controversial in conservative circles because it does drive cart and horses through the old privileged status of independent education. Long gone are the direct grant schools, the support for tax breaks for private education. Now we are leading the argument for improving standards, not with the old refrain of selection, 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 but by allowing people, citizens, access to their own resources to establish their own institutions, 
to rival the best of the independent sector within the state sector. Now, you've probably gathered I am a political romantic. I do believe that ideas count and that good ideas count more. But I'm also a realist, and I appreciate there may be some teething problems, details to be resolved. And that we can help by setting parameters. Personally, I believe our efforts moving forward in assisting parents must be targeted in areas of deprivation. Um, here in Wandsworth, as we are hearing this evening, there are more academies coming on stream and also options for more free schools where the need is demonstrable. And we welcome them because if parents, if teachers and if communities want more say in running their schools, not only do we applaud that spirit, but in a properly free country, we simply do not have the right and should not have the right to stop them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ben Johnson. <clears throat> I think Councillor Nadler made some interesting points there. And, uh, so I'm going to try and clarify for uh, uh, something about our position on, on schools, on education. Um, we want to see good schools, uh, schools that extend opportunities, particularly in deprived areas, uh, that drive up standards in their localities and close the attainment gap between children from the richest and the poorest backgrounds. Um, where schools, including free schools perhaps, are established that that are successful, that uh, deliver quality education for their pupils and um, you know, do help to close that attainment gap, then I'm sure those schools would uh, receive the support of Labour councillors. Um, but from what we've heard from this debate tonight, from everything we've heard in the past, will the Bolingbroke School and schools like it help achieve those goals? We haven't heard anything to suggest it, anything that, to suggest that uh, that is a superior way of going ahead rather than working with DfE to try and find funding for a new LEA school. I don't believe, um, and Councillor Speck touched on this, I don't believe that every Conservative uh, councillor in Wandsworth is necessarily attached to this free schools concept. Um, I, I imagine that the majority of you agree with us that what's important is that every child uh, has access to a really good school and that excellence should not be reserved for the best off um, or those who live in the right areas. And uh, I know that many will agree uh, that our local education authority has a strong record in delivering very good schools. Um, perhaps a few might even agree with us that this free school policy is really a distraction from the vital task of improving uh, the majority of schools across the borough. We don't oppose more schools. We don't oppose diversity in provision. We don't oppose the involvement of organisations who want to be more involved in our education system and bring innovation. Uh, just as the last Labour government introduced academies and trust schools, programmes which were focused on raising attainment in some of the most deprived neighbourhoods. What we oppose is diverting limited resources which could be best spent improving educational outcomes for children that need the most help across the borough. If free schools in Wandsworth do help to close that attainment gap uh, between children from rich and poor backgrounds, if they extend opportunities, if they're based on fair admissions policies and local demand, then we'll ap applaud their achievements and see what happens in the future. But so far, there's absolutely nothing to suggest that as an alternative to backing for good new LEA-run schools, they will deliver anything. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Tracy. Uh, thank you. It's rather appropriate that we started this evening with tributes to um, Peter Brennan. And in particular, I think um, Councillor Cook mentioned the leisure services uh, privatisation. Um, I can assure the members opposite who weren't in the chamber at the time that was as controversial at that time as um, their, and their speeches could have been exactly the same relating to that as they are now to the free school movement. Um, Ormond, any new idea. Um, they have totally, um, I have to say, misunderstood the role of the Commission, which is because we are expecting to have um, several uh, uh, people uh, wanting to set up free schools and apply for free schools, and the idea of the Commission is that an independent uh, chaired Commission, and I'm very pleased and proud that uh, Baroness Pauline Perry has agreed to chair the Commission, 
is to actually look at the possible providers and to give a risk assessment. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, the fear that uh, 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 our own schools might in some way be affected by the free school movement. We have never been frightened of competition in Wandsworth and we are the one borough that shows that competition actually can really make a difference to raising standards. Um, I uh, heard with interest um, uh, Councillor Speck's comment about I'd be delighted to open uh, another new school. Well, of course, I was very pleased and proud in September to um, see the opening of St John Bosco, and I have absolutely no doubt uh, will be an excellent, outstanding school, and members might be interested to know that at their very first governor's meeting, um, they discussed whether or not they should go for an academy, and we are now going down that route or looking at it. 80% um, by the end of next year of the schools in Wandsworth, I believe, because of their um, outstanding uh, offsets, will be eligible uh, to become academies. And now that um, some of the schools have, I believe that the move towards becoming academy and more independent of the local authority will actually um, gather pace and we will see a lot of our schools wanting to move down that route. And that is absolutely right. A local authority in all the services we deliver should be the backstop for those most in need. But when you actually have a, a, an excellent school with an excellent governing body, they should be given the freedom to take that school to the next uh, level. I'm very pleased and, of course, agree totally with Councillor Nadler's uh, uh, comments, but I'm very pleased uh, to uh, have welcomed her to Swaby Gardens, which is in my ward, um, an excellent uh, playground, which, of course, has been subject to um, reason, re recent refurbishment, part of our £1 million investment in Wandsworth Playgrounds over the last two years. Um, this paper is setting out quite clearly in black and white um, exactly where this council is going on academies and free schools. We wholeheartedly support the uh, uh, proposals that are coming from government. And um, I don't know of anybody on my side who isn't enthusiastic about this. And I think that uh, the opposition side really are um, uh, trying as hard as they can to um, put some division. There is none. We are wholeheartedly enthusiastic about delivering this programme. Thank you, Councillor Tracy. The motion now before the Council is the receipt of paragraph 13 of the Executive Report in relation to free schools and academies. Please indicate by a show of hands for those for the motion. For those against the motion, ten. No, it's another is it? Ten. Ten. Well. Any abstentions? No. The result of the voting is thirty-eight for ten against. And the motion is carried. Madam Mayor, uh, in view of the lateness of the hour, I'd like to invoke uh, standing order number thirty-eight to expedite the remaining business. Second. Read. Thank you. We will now deal with the remaining paragraphs and reports, continuing with Executive Report Number 1, Adult Care and Health, OSC, Councillor Madden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 1 is for information. Agreed. Okay. Environment, Culture and Community Safety, OSC, Councillor Cook. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraphs 3, 4 and 5 are for information. Agreed. Thank you. Strategic Planning and Transportation, OSC, Councillor King. Uh, I've got paragraphs 7, 8 and 9, which are information. I think paragraph 6 might be Council Cousins, though. Is that agreed? No. Do you want to... Same, same numbers? Thank you. 8 and 9 against. 7, you agreed. Councillor Daly. You've got, we'll you've got a fresh count. 
Okay. So paragraph six, which actually is not for here, this is for Councillor Cousins anyway. Councillor Cousins, would, yes, just for information. So do everybody agree? Paragraph six, agreed. Paragraph seven. Paragraph eight. Yeah, those four. Thirty-eight for those against. Twelve, 12 against. Therefore, it's carried. Paragraph nine is for information. Agreed. Same, same numbers. Thank you. Education Services OSC Council, Mrs. Tracy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraphs ten to fourteen are for information. Agreed. Agreed. Um, housing I see, Councillor Ellis. Uh, Madam Mayor, Council, uh, uh, paragraph 16 is for information. Agreed. Yeah. Finance and Corporate Resources I see, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraph 17 is for information. Paragraph 18 is for information. Paragraph 19, which we didn't discuss, is also for information. And paragraph 20 is for information. No. The Planning Applications Committee Report Number 2, Councillor Cuff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraphs 1, 2 and 3 are for information. Agreed. Thank you. No, it's right. Paragraph 1. Same numbers. Agreed. Paragraph 2. Same numbers. Thank you. Paragraph 3. Again, same numbers. Planning application committee report number 3, Councillor Cuff. Paragraph 1 for information. Agreed. Thank you. Planning application... Committee report number four, Councillor Cuff. Paragraph one for information. Paragraph two for information. Paragraph three for information. Thank you. Plan applications committee report number five, Councillor Cuff. Thank you. Paragraph one for information. Paragraph two for information. Again, same numbers. No, it's not. It's 3810. 3810. Has somebody gone? Yeah, two. Two have gone. Yes, 3810. Um, Pensions Commission Report Number 6, Councillor Heaster. Your Worship, Paragraphs 1 and 2 are for information. Agreed. Audit Committee Report Number 7, Councillor Heaster. Your Worship, uh, um, Paragraphs 1, 2, 4, 5 and 6 are for information. Thank you. General Purses Committee Report Number 9, Councillor Morritt. Madam Mayor, Paragraph 2 for information. Agreed. We've had power at four. Um, Standards Committee Report Number 10, Council Professor Mrs. Howlett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Five, one, and two. Agreed. Thank you, Councillors. That concludes the business for tonight's meeting. Good night.